guys, PJ Design here. How's it going? How do you like my video so far? If there's anything you want me to change or anything you want me to do differently, let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at constraints and assembly models. So we're just going to wait for inventor to load. But basically, all an assembly model is is where you take your parts and you bring them into your assembly model where you can constrain them to one another to create some kind of whatever object or, or assembly that you want to create. Use your parts and constrain them to one another to create your assembly. Alright, so once Inventor's opened, if you never opened the assembly file before, you're going to want to go to New, and this dialog box is going to open. You're going to have your standard part here. Don't click on that. That's what you made your other parts in. So go to Standard IAM. This is your assembly file. So this is going to take a second to load. Alright, so once this finally opens, you're going to want to go to Place. In here, this is where you're going to find all the parts you've created in this project. So select your, your parts, then hit open. So they're going to open, and Inventor's automatically going to place them in here for you once. If you click again, they'll appear again, and then you'll have two sets of your objects. So right away, Inventor's going to ground one of your objects. Right now, this table is grounded. As you can see, it grounded is checked off. So right now, these parts can move this one can't because it's grounded so if you go and select grounded it will unground it for you and it will be able to move but usually when you have an assembly you want to ground one of your objects because this is what you constrain the other objects to and you don't want everything to be able to move at once so the first constraint we're gonna look at is gonna be our face-to-face -face constraint so go ahead and select the bottom of this pole right here and constrain it to the tabletop. So we're going to pretend that this is a leg and that this is a table. So bottom of the leg to the top of the table. Select that and it's just going to pop right on there. So hit apply. So what this constraint has, do has done is that it's made this face constrained to the other face and that this can only move laterally now. So go back here. So typically you don't want this to be able to move all over the place. So go to constraint again, select this face and then this one and it's going to do another face-to-face -face mate constraint. So say we don't want it to be there, you can hit this flush button and it will jump to the other side where it's going to be a flush instead of a mate. So again, what if you don't want this to be right against the edge? You can go to this offset command, type in say 0.1 and it's going to move to the inside 0.1 inches which is very small for a table but regardless. So if we want to go in the other direction, negative 0.1. So that's how you make it go the other way. So just hit negative or 0.1 for now and hit apply so that's good so right now this will only be able to move in one direction because we've constrained to this edge and it is flush or it is mated to this face right here so say we don't want this to move at all go to constraint again select that face select this one go to flush and it's gonna flush itself to that face so 0.1 again and it will be square in that corner so hit apply cancel perfect. So that's just basically how you do your face-to-face -face constraints in Inventor. So go ahead and delete this and we're gonna do we're gonna try a different type of constraint next. So hit the constrain button and in here you're gonna see this one right here. This is your tangent constraint. Select that, select your tabletop and then select this outside of your wheel and this will jump and become tangent to this plane. So hit apply again, cancel, and it will only be able to move on this plane. So now we're going to do another face-to-face -face constraint just to make this a bit simpler. So go ahead, select those two, select flush again, and then you can move back, say, 0.5, and it's going to move backwards onto there, 0.5. Select apply, cancel, and now this can only move back and forth, and it can rotate. So the next constraint we're going to look, look at is once again going to be in this face-to-face -face constraint. So if you hover over this edge, you're going to see the axis of this wheel appear. So select that, and it's going to highlight the axis. And then select this plane. And now it's automatically going to align this axis with this plane. So here, you can always do this offset where you do 0.1, and it will move. But we just want it to stay on the axis and that plane right now. It has, for some reason, deselected it. So you can go ahead and select this plane again and select apply. Okay, we're gonna have to redo that because it didn't like that for some reason. So go ahead, select that axis again in this plane. Hit apply, cancel. So now it can only rotate on that one spot. 
So if you go back in here, you can always change these constraints. So if you go to this mate, you can double click on it and then hit 0.1. Enter, and it'll move 0.1. So we don't really want it to be 0.1. We want it to be something like negative 0.5. So there we go. It's right on the table. Perfect. So it can still rotate, though. That's a problem. So select constraint again. Go to your angular constraint and select this directed angle. So right now... You're going to open up on this wheel tab. You're going to go to the origin, open that up, and you can see the, the uh, planes that make up this shape. So select the XY plane, or the XZ plane, sorry, and the top face of your table. It's automatically going to align your wheel, wheel's axis with the top face. So say you want to change that angle. 90 degrees, okay, it's going to rotate 90 degrees, 30, 30 degrees. So we're just going to keep it at zero for now, and select apply cancel and this won't be able to rotate so that's how you do an angular constraint so that something doesn't rotate these angular constraints become more important when you're animating it so the last constraint I want to show you guys is an axis to axis constraint so import another wheel into there and then select both axes for these wheels hit constraint select both of these axes and it will automatically constrain each other one axis to the other so hit apply cancel and you'll be able to move one of these out of here. So if you look at this real closely, you can see that it's perfectly aligned with the axis of the other one, but only one of them can spin. So this one can spin and move back and forth. This one can't move at all. So that's the benefit of having this axis to axis. So say you're putting together a rim, a wheel, some type of object like that, axis to axis will help you out a lot there. Same with these, same with these uh, plane constraints. They'll help you out a lot. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Comment if you have any questions or you need something answered. See you later.